Agenis von der Planitz, originally named John Richard Swigert, is famous for creating the raw primal diet. He passed away in 2013, and a cult-like following has developed since with these dietary beliefs. The raw primal diet is obviously raw, and it focuses on raw animal foods, not consuming salt, vegetable juicing as opposed to water, as well as several other nuances. Ajanis had been known to tell lies and elaborate stories. He actually obtained a fake degree claiming he had a doctorate in nutrition. Not that modern dietetics and nutrition degrees are worth anything, but it's definitely worth noting he has been caught lying. He alleges that he discovered the primal diet when he was out in the desert. His health was so poor, he decided he would wander off and die of thirst. But as he was resting one night, a raccoon found him in the desert and fed him caviar. <laughs> I, I, that, that was a joke, guys. The actual story is... Uh, some, I think it was like a jackal, uh, gave him a dead rabbit out in the desert. And this apparently gave him the understanding that raw food was healing and he regained his strength uh, on the raw food. And then he told another story like he found a rattlesnake, he stepped on it, he swung it, and then he ate the rattlesnake raw. I mean, you guys can watch any of these videos, there are plenty of them on YouTube, and choose whether or not to believe him, but one thing's for certain, he had really good ideas and was well ahead of his time, wrong about some things, and whether he encouraged raw meat and developed this elaborate personality intentionally or not is up in the air. We don't know if he did this to be extreme or had other thoughts in mind. He had many patients helping people on death's door, and certainly knew how to promote himself uh, while doing so, uh, presenting his ideas in a unique way. Now, I understand a lot of you guys are going to be turned off by me talking about him in a negative light, but I have been suffering to an extreme extent over the past year by listening to Ajanis' health advice. It doesn't work for everyone. I followed his diet and suffered a combination of H. pylori, SIBO, and candida, and I'm still having issues with it. There are modern factors such as lack of breastfeeding, environmental toxins that did not exist in Ajanis' day and age. This makes his diet much less effective than it was when he was around. You literally could not mess up your stomach more than I have. Any further than that, I'd probably be going in for surgery and getting part of my stomach removed. It's very, very difficult to fix these health issues once they occur. A combination of my allergy to dairy, the gut dysbiosis, the bacterial imbalance caused by you know high fruit sugar consumption as well as fat consumption, this diet can be dangerous for some people. Ajanis believed that salt was not to be consumed. He came to this conclusion because of some of his patients who had frequent headaches. Stopping salt fixed the headache, but when they came back, they would still occasionally get headaches. Removing the salt wasn't really a solution. And even though they had stopped salt consumption, he found clumps of salt in their blood. The body accumulates pockets of salt. These pockets can burst and cause problems. My guess at why people are experiencing these headaches and also had a high salt level in their blood despite not consuming any is related to brain damage. The brain has a high sodium content and salt can be released in cell death. I was reviewing uh, his book earlier and one thing to note is Ajanis consumed six pounds of honey per month. If your diet is deficient in sodium, you might have low blood pressure. Consuming sugar constantly is a way to keep your energy up. I've noticed that no one is really able to follow this raw primal diet without sugar or dairy. 
Raw honey does have a type of enzyme that acts as insulin, but it's still sugar and stressful on the body, especially when you're consuming that high of an amount. We know that every single group of our hunter-gatherer ancestors consumed fermented and rotten meat for its health properties. Ajanis observed this and used a microscope to analyze the stages of bacteria that occurred in meat. And I wish we had whatever research he did because we really don't know to this day. And the health of the gut microbiome and these probiotic foods, he was well ahead of the curve, ahead of everyone else. And I think we're missing some pieces to the puzzle. Ajanis believed that all non-man-made bacteria was symbiotic. So all bacteria that occurred in our natural environment was good for us. This bacteria eats up dead cells and helps clear waste. Freezing meat can alter this bacterial profile into favoring the growth of undesirable strains of bacteria. And cooked meat can also feed bad types of bacteria in the stomach, which can lead to issues. Ajanis had a lot of cancer patients as well, and eating raw meat adds an element of caloric restriction, which has been shown to be beneficial for cancer trials. There are enzymes in raw meat that can help digest it more efficiently, as well as enzymes in our bodies that we use to digest meat. So when you consume raw meat, you digest it more efficiently than cooked meat, but it digests slower. And there's a reason that every single hunter-gatherer group consumed raw, cooked, and fermented meat. There was no group of people that only subsisted off of raw meat. By cooking food, you're increasing its caloric availability, which is necessary in certain climates, like colder climates. And it's also necessary when food is plentiful, so you can cook that food, eat more of it, and fatten up for times of famine. If we know that every single group of human beings ate cooked food in some capacity, it's kind of hard to justify a raw diet for any reason. Ajanis believed that cooked meat was carcinogenic, referencing heterocyclic amines and polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons. These are substances that are produced when any product is cooked at a high temperature. The issue is that these substances haven't actually been proven to be carcinogenic. They isolate these substances and inject them into rats at unrealistic doses. He's making an assumption of a poorly conducted study. So I don't really know. Ajana seems like a person that would be intelligent enough not to overlook something like this. So maybe there's a deeper reason that he advocated against cooked foods. And even though Ajanis knew quite a bit about raw meat, he was wrong with the availability of the protein, claiming that it was between uh, 20 and 40% in raw meat on various occasions, when reality, it's much higher, uh, especially when consumed in a caloric restricted state. Raw primal diet, we're not supposed to salt our food, we're not supposed to cook our food. Ajanis also believed you shouldn't drink water because it saps minerals from your cells, he opted for juicing vegetables instead. This is true to some degree through osmosis, but it's just a normal physiological process in the body. The amount of minerals you are consuming from food is what actually determines what goes in and out of the cell. Ajanis had specific juice mixtures and remedies for certain ailments. I'm assuming this was because uh, the mineral or nutrient profile of these juices correlates to a specific issue someone is having. But this doesn't really make sense as plant foods tend to be pretty consistent across the board in the mineral and element profile. Now, raw juicing instead of drinking tap water, I mean, it might have less fluoride or chlorine. I don't really know why he advocated for it, but the amount of herbicides and pesticides and negative substances you consume in these plant foods would be insane if you were juicing every single day. It's crazy as hell to think that sucking down pesticides and herbicides is better for you than drinking water. Uh, same with the idea that sucking down six pounds of honey per month is better than salting your food. Not to mention our hunter-gatherer ancestors drank water when it was available. 
And although Adonis advocates for vegetable juicing, there were videos of him juicing sugar cane, he seemed to consume a lot of fruit, so the sugar consumption in Adonis' raw primal diet seems to be something that goes under the radar, and I'm curious if he was truthful about what he actually did versus what he advocated for people to do. Last but not least, Adonis believed that parasites are beneficial to the body and symbiotic. This is dangerous advice, and to generalize all parasites being okay indicates a lack of understanding of them. Tapeworms are drastically different than roundworms, trichinosis is never a good thing, and Ajanus never seemed to demonstrate or explain why. Whenever Ajanus explained something, he would say some truth, but he wouldn't go in depth or give a reason why. And that's understandable because most people wouldn't understand any deeper than what he gave them. Many people credit Ajanis for the raw food movement, especially legalizing raw milk in California. But there were many people before him that were trying to do the same, and it wasn't a one-man army. There was also a food club known as Rawsome Foods, which was actually started by a man named James Stewart. Yet, Ajanis tried to claim credit for starting it and was even involved in a lawsuit against the original owner of this food club. I did not want to make this video. I don't like talking negatively about people in any way whatsoever, but I do not want to see someone suffer from the health problems like I had. There is no nutritional savior. There is no one that knows everything, whether it's Dr. CB, Ajanis Vonderplanets, Noon Amin Ra, these people with these very narrow-minded, to some degree, ideas about nutrition. And yes, there's a lot of truth to these things, but you have to look at both sides. And unfortunately, not everyone is capable of doing the amount of nutritional research to understand that some of these things aren't true. And the cult-like mentality really sucks people in, whether it's veganism, whether it's raw primal diet, and that sense of community really keeps people in. Thank you guys for joining me today. If you could please like the video, subscribe, hit that bell icon, and share it if you can. If you guys would like to support me further, uh, you can check out frankiesnaturals.com if you want to look like a Roman statue, and if you want to look like a Roman statue on the inside, go to frankiesfreerangemeat.com. Uh, we are looking to do a bunch of things in the future, such as getting you guys raw dairy, providing high-quality, nutrient-dense animal foods at an affordable price. We have discount codes, literally the cheapest source of grass-fed beef, caviar, raw cheeses, nutrient-dense foods online, frankiesfreerangemeat.com. Check it out, guys.